Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel Television. A reminder of our top stories. Leaders from the southeast region of Nigeria meet with President Buhari over developmental challenges in the region, optimistic of resolution of grievances. The presidency accuses opposition of championing clamor for restructuring of Nigeria, says it's not against calls by Nigerians. A federal high court in Makodi Benue State remands state lawmakers and four others in prison over alleged 107 billion naira fraud. And U.S. President Donald Trump refuses to sign off agreements with Iran, vows to deny the country access to nuclear weapons. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our websites, channelstv.com and youtube.com slash channelsweb. Log on to m.channelstv.com to watch us on your mobile device or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. The Channels TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You will also have access to the eyewitness feature with which you can share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. Speaking of which, we do have some of the pictures that you sent into our portal. Let's take a look at them, shall we? We begin in Lagos State with this image showing an uncompleted pedestrian bridge on the Lekki, sorry, the Lekki Expressway. Our eyewitness reporter says pedestrians are already plying it in its state as it is unsafe to cross the expressway. He wants the project completed as soon as possible. Still in Lagos is this picture of a bad road from Coconut Axis in the Apapa Oshudi Expressway showing tankers blocking one lane and trucks carrying containers on the other. Our eyewitness reporter says the road has become impassable. He's asking government to help. Our final picture is from the Eket area in Aquabom State. We see an overloaded vehicle on Marina Road. Our eyewitness reporter wants the Federal Road Safety Court to intensify their efforts towards safety awareness. Thanks for sending any of those pictures and please keep them coming. We go back to the courts now. A high court sitting in Benin City, the Edo State Capital, has granted bail to a former chairman of the Edo State Universal Basic Education Board, Subeb, Mr. Stephen Alao and four others. In his ruling, Justice Ohimai Obiagele granted bail in the sum of one million naira each for the accused persons, including the woman leader of the Edo State Chapter of the All Progressives Congress. They were arraigned in court by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, over allegations of illegally awarding contracts worth 1.5 billion naira while serving as Subeb board members. Outside of the country, Nigeria's central bank governor, Gordon Imefile, is asking foreign investors to explore areas within the country's agricultural sector. Mr. Miefele was speaking at a forum hosted by Forbes magazine to honor his achievement in the foreign exchange markets, import substitution, and in particular, the Anchor Borrowers Program. Channel's business news editor, Bosun Omofaye, was at the event and reports. This award presentation to Nigeria's central bank governor, Godwin Emefile, presented him yet another opportunity to ramp up the country's campaign for increased foreign participation in the Nigerian economy, and in particular, the agriculture sector, using the central bank intervention program as the anchor. We are still battling with the with unemployment situation. And that's the reason, again, the, the president called on the Federal Minister of Agri called on the Central Bank, called on the Minister of Empl Employment, Labor and Productivity and some important uh, other stakeholders, some governors, and said there is a need for us to come together and begin to think about how do we create jobs for our people through agriculture. That agriculture should not be seen as business that is meant for the poor, that you can make money from agriculture. Countries that have done well, countries that have progressed, have done so because they took the agriculture, agriculture sector very seriously. We are determined to make agriculture a sector where people will make money. And that's the reason we decided to, 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 to put in place the Anchor Burras program. The Corporate Council for Africa believes Nigeria is an attractive field for American investors who are looking to lock into government policies and actions. 
We also are very um, thankful to see the work that's being done on ease of doing business in Nigeria, all the efforts that are happening there. And we believe that they're going to pay off. Many of our members welcome it as an opportunity to see how they can do more, how they can trade more with Nigeria and invest more in Nigeria. And so we thank you for your efforts. Uh, and then we note that we have a number of agricultural related businesses that are part of uh, CCA as well. I won't name names, uh, but many are, are, are major companies. And uh, we noticed that in the work of the bank that uh, there is a lot of support for agricultural development uh, in the continent and in uh, Nigeria in particular, obviously. And uh, so we just want you to know that we have companies that are ready to partner to bring new technologies and platforms uh, to Nigeria to help you meet the goals that you and uh, the president and others have for Nigeria's agricultural sector and your agribusiness sector as well. Although this little gathering of some Nigerian bank CEOs and heads of agencies like the Debt Management Office, the Asset Management Corporation, and the West Africa Monetary Institute was designed to honor the leadership of Godwin Emefele at the central bank. The underlying message was to further the call that Nigeria is ready and open for business. Boston Namafaya, Channel Television News in Washington, D.C. He has Boston now live from Washington, where he's been monitoring the World Bank meetings. Hi, Boston. We know a number of meetings have been taking place. What can you tell us about them? Well, of course, we've had a, a number of uh, meetings uh, today, of course, as, as you know. Um, of course, most of them basically uh, focus on, on regional economies, Africa, Latin America, uh, issues around governance, how government institutions uh, can be strengthened and how low-income countries uh, can ramp up on human capital development. The, the, the last one that is just ending in about uh, five minutes from now has the uh, Rwandan president President Paul Kagame, uh, the Yagore president also in attendance, as well as the World Bank uh, president, including uh, the Minister of State for the United Kingdom from Indonesia and from uh, other countries as well. So uh, basically, the, the key focus uh, for Sub-Saharan Africa and around the world is the need to invest more in human capital. And the World Bank president, uh, uh, Kim Jong, uh, Jim Yong Kim, uh, said, look, even the World Bank has to rethink what it did, uh, what has been its focus for the last few decades that investment in infrastructure should come before human capital. Now the World Bank is rethinking that investment in human assets, in human capital, should come first before infrastructure, because humans are the most important asset you can invest in if you want growth, if you want, uh, uh, if you want development, and if you want an inclusive uh, economy that will uh, make people grow as fast as they could, creating their own wealth. Amaraj. Boston. We'll have to check back with you later on developments at the IMF and World Bank meeting. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Let's head on to Abuja now, where Ibrahim Adra is standing by with more on the News at 10. Hi, Ibrahim. Hello, Amarachi. Well, I can report that President Muhammad Buhari is one of the many Nigerians who have been reacting to the death of some secondary students who drowned in River Kaduna while on excursion on Wednesday. In a statement by Special Advisor on Media and Publicity, Mr. Femi Adishino, President Muhammad Buhari commiserates with the bereaved parents, the school authority and the Kaduna state government over the incident. The statement reads, the president prays that God will comfort families and friends affected by the profound loss of these young minds, and he wishes speedy recovery to other staff and students who are in shock over the unfortunate incident. End of quote. A nine students of the private school fell into the water. Four were rescued, while the five bodies of those who drowned have been recovered. Meanwhile, the Kaduna state government has been commiserating with the bereaved families over the loss of their loved ones. The deputy governor, Mr. Bala Bantex, who visited them in the Sabontesha area of the state capital, promised that an investigation will be launched into the immediate and remote causes of the mishap. Mr. Bantex, accompanied by top government officials, also visited the scene of the incident at Kaduna River, where he was briefed by officials of the State Emergency Management Agency. 
It's painful that we are working so hard to ensure that, of course, children get education. You are aware of the reconstruction of schools, the, the changing of teachers to ensure that they get the best. We cannot be doing this and losing some of them and be happy. We are indeed very sad as a government about this incident. And uh, we've listened to the parents. The parents are godly. They are, they, they are humane. They think that uh, we should leave everything to God, but uh, we will we will we will not be we would not have completed our responsibility without really interrogating, because it is only through interrogation that we can stop further incidences of this nature. We need to. There are government agencies involved. We are going to come up with a report and do what is necessary, all in an attempt to ensure that this is the last of its kind. <clears throat> Kaduna State Deputy Governor Bala Bantex. The need for citizens to adhere to safety rules re echoed today as Nigeria joined the rest of the world to mark the 2017 International Day for Disaster Risk Reduction. Addressing journalists at a news conference in Abuja, the Director General of the National Emergency Management Agency appealed to Nigerians to adhere to warnings and avoid building on waterways to reduce flooding and resultant disasters. From man-made disasters to some natural disasters, including flooding, Nigeria has no doubt had its fair share of disasters in recent times, some with very devastating consequences. Today is a very special... Officials of the National program. Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, are in this hall in Abuja to mark the 2017 International Day for Disaster Risk Reduction, with a call on citizens to adhere to warnings about disasters as a means of reducing risks. We are all aware of the devastation to lives and property caused by the 2017 flood across 27 states of the Federation. With much havoc in Benue, Lagos, and Niger, and some other areas, communities need to be adhered to warnings. Avoid developing settlements in flood plains. Heed to advises, ensure adherence to approved building plans, cause and invest in hazard proof structures. When disasters strike, the capacity to manage the situation or otherwise can significantly determine the rate of casualties. But just how much capacity does Nigeria have? Nigeria, like other developing countries, is faced with challenges of changing, changing climate, environmental, social, and conflict-related disasters. These major challenges are magnified due to inadequate capacities to identify and manage the disaster risks that exist. On the sideline of the event, DG of NEMA also spoke about what government is doing to reduce disaster-related risks in internally displaced persons camp in the northeast. In the shortest time, I believe people will be, uh, move, will be made to move to their locations. The government is doing all it could to ensure that this is achieved. Since 1989, October 13 every year has been set aside by the United Nations to promote a global culture of risks awareness and disaster reduction. It's hoped that this year's theme, which is Home, Safe, Home, will help in reducing exposure to disasters and its associated risks. When the news at 10 returns, International Monetary Fund asks Nigeria and other sub-Saharan African countries to improve on tax reform policies. Do join us again.